Hello my dear student, I am Professor Devashish Bose, Head, Department of Criminology and Forensic Science, Dr. Harisingh Gaur Vishwadhyale, Sagar, Madhya Pradesh. Today, I am going to present a lecture of Introduction to Forensic Science and Branches, which has been jointly prepared by myself and Mr. Giraj Sharma, a PhD scholar and a UGC JRF at Department of Criminology and Forensic Science, Dr. Harisingh Gaur Vishwadhyale, Sagar. So let's start our discussion while taking a look at what we are going to learn today. Today, in module 1, we will see introduction of forensic science branches. Module 2 will be classification of branches of forensic science. Module 3 will be explanation of branches of forensic science. Module 4 will be explanation of branches of forensic science with respect to other sciences. Module 5 will be role of forensic science branches in criminal investigation and finally module 6 will be our conclusion. My dear student, now we are going to learn the branches of forensic science. As we know for the sake of convenience we divide subjects in different branches. Take for example chemistry. It has its own branches like physical chemistry, in organic chemistry, organic chemistry. Further, physical chemistry could be again divided into analytical chemistry like this. Moreover, we can take the example of biology that has more than 200 branches. So my dear student, you know this division of branches creates interest among you. So one more thing is that nowadays forensic science is a fascinating and facilitating subject for the students. You know that forensic science is a combination of various branches of science. Therefore, it has various branches like we have in physics, chemistry, biology, statistics, anthropology like this. These branches of forensic science has its own importance. Suppose that an investigating officer got a biological evidence from a crime scene. Now, think what he should do with that, where he should send. In addition to this, if one will know the knowledge of the branches, one can easily send a particular thing to a particular section. Otherwise, it had to send to a biology division or one send it to physics division. So it could be a problematic or a chaotic situation. Therefore, it is very necessary to the investigating officer to have the knowledge of forensic science. So my dear student, now we are going to... Moreover, we will also have the brief knowledge of the forensic science branches. So before going to discuss the branches of forensic science, we need to discuss about the classification. So let's start with the classification. As we know that since the dawn of civilization, there has been many attempts to classify the living organism. Here, we are going with the biological example because for the sake of student, it would be simpler in comparison to other or you can easily grab it. Perhaps you might have heard the name of Aristotle the Great, who was the first scientist of that time who gave a scientific basis for the classification. He did nothing, but he used the morphological characters to classify plants into trees, shrubs and herbs. Moreover, he also classified animals into two categories, those which had red bloods and those who didn't have these. So, it was the scientific view of Aristotle for the classification of living organism. So, my dear student, classification means arranging the things in the system. I think you all know about the classification. You have studied in your school days. So, it was the scientific view of Aristotle for the classification of the living organism. Classification means arranging the things in a systematic and scientific way so that people can use them it just like our home kitchen where we put different spices in different containers and do not mix them. If we mix them, it would be very difficult to separate them or to use them. We have to throw them away. Moreover, you can take the example of our library where you get different tags for separate subjects such as physics books are kept in the physics cell. Books from chemistry are kept in the different section for chemistry. Now imagine if we mix them, what will happen? It will take a lot of time to select the desired book or may maybe you never will able to find a particular book because that book is lying in some other section. 
Now here, I would like to remember the five kingdom classification of living organism that is based on certain characteristics. In five kingdom classification, all living organism have been divided in five groups such as kingdom monera, kingdom protesta, kingdom fungi and kingdom animalia. I think now you have understood the concept of classification. Even in chemistry, we divide matter in solid, liquid and gas. So, like these classification, we can also divide forensic science in different groups. Just you can take the example of crime scene management, where the management of crime scene is divided into four parts, such as information management, technological management, manpower management, and finally the logistic management. So, these all are the ways to classify the branches of forensic science. So, for the sake of convenience, we can divide it into two groups. So, branches of forensic science. Under mention are the branches of forensic science that had been developed by the forensic science during the time of development and after the development of the subject, such as forensic study of impressions, firearm identification unit or commonly known as forensic ballistics, document examination division, audio forensic, criminalistic, forensic photography. Next, we see branches of forensic science which are developed from other screen or which are taken from other stream of sciences like forensic medicine, forensic anthropology, forensic chemistry, forensic biology, forensic physics, forensic geology, forensic pathology, forensic toxicology, forensic taphonomy, forensic statistics, forensic engineering, forensic psychiatry. So, these are the branches and many more branches which we have taken from the other regular courses or regular subjects. The name of the branches of forensic science. So, let's start our discussion. The study of impressions. This is the study and analysis and classification of pattern observed in an individual. Fingerprint. Fingerprint are the unique source of individualization for human. In essence, there is no one in this world who has similar fingerprints. So what happens whenever a person touches, holds or lifts any object which he or she comes in contact with, there is a chance of transfer of his or her fingerprint impression. Fingerprint could be observed as a visible pattern or a plastic pattern or a latent pattern on an object. In most of the cases, latent fingerprint are found at crime scene. The latent fingerprint needs physical or chemical methods for their development. Moreover, enhancement, classification, recording, comparison, testimony of fingerprint is done by a fingerprint expert. Next in this series, we move on to tool marks. What are tool marks? Its a study is very important because these marks are commonly encountered at various crime scenes such as in this, such as crime involving robbery, theft, decoity, sabotage, etc. It involves the examination of traditional and non-traditional tool marks. Next in this series, we come to tire and track marks. It includes the study, examination and comparison of source of origin and interpretation of results of tire and track mark. It also provides information about width of tire, design of tire, pattern of tire and distance between the two adjacent tire. Foot and footwear marks. It deals with the examination of foot and footwear marks and comparison of suspected marks. After examining these marks, after examining these marks, we can possibly explain the gender, age, weight of the person involved. Firearm Identification Unit or commonly known as Forensic Ballistic. It involves the examination of firearms, live cartridges, cartridge shell, discharge bullet, shotgun cases, gunpowder, gunshot residue, shotgun pellets, pattern, distant estimation of firing, restoration of numbers of firearms, wound ballistics and ammunition of all types. Moreover, it also includes the different type of marks such as serration marks or friction mark, breech face mark, fire and ping mark and extractor or ejector mark in automated weapons. 
Next we come to document examination division. Document examination is a term for a forensic science discipline pertaining to documents that are potentially disputed at a court of law. It includes the investigation of handwriting, typewriting, paper and ink. It also examines obliterations, erasures and burned or charred documents. Audio forensic. It is a field of forensic science which deals with the sound recording in a criminal investigation. It works on the principle that no two human beings can have a similar voice. This unique character of voice comes by the combination of various throat organs like vocal cords, mouth, tongue, teeth and lips. Criminalistic The term is sometimes used as a synonym of forensic science. Criminalistic is an English word derived from the German word of criminalistic. This was used for the first time by Sir Hans Gross. It involves the correction and analysis of physical evidence at the scene of crime. Moreover, it also deals with the various areas such as fingerprint, tool marks, firearms, poison and drugs, footwear trace evidence, explosive and biological fluids. Forensic Photography Photography is a facility for the forensic scientist. It plays a crucial role in each and every field of forensic science, such as question document, fingerprint, tool marks, foot and footwear marks, tire and track marks, biological fluid, firearms, and overall the scene of crime itself. In the above module, we have learned about its own branches, as I have discussed before. Now, we are going for other disciplines, that means those from other discipline having its forensic application. First we start with forensic medicine. It is a subject concerned with the application of medical and paramedical scientific knowledge to certain branches of law. Forensic Anthropology This is a special sub-area of anthropology which deals with the study or the identification and examination of human skeletal remains. Basically, forensic anthropologist uses the skeletal remains to determine whether the skeletal remains are of human origin or animal origin. If it is of human origin, then we consider the age, gender, height, race, place and other characteristics such as the socio-economic status. Forensic anthropologist also plays a significant role in the reconstruction of crime scene as well as identification of victims in case of mass disaster such as bomb blast, building collapse, natural disaster or even in plane crash. Now we move on to forensic chemistry. Forensic chemistry is concerned with the application of chemistry or chemical science to the criminal justice system. Typically, forensic chemists do the qualitative and quantitative study of the matter. He or she also determines the adulteration in various materials such as petrol, diesel, kerosene or fuels, spices, food products, clothes, drugs, polymers, ink, paints or all those materials which are financially important and adulterants would like to adulterate it. Forensic chemists figure prominently in the case of bombings and composition of materials. Now we move on to forensic biology. Forensic biologist analyzes the part of a living being as well as the biological fluid. With the help of these evidences, he can establish the identification of living being. It includes branches from forensic botany, application of botany to criminal investigation, Moreover, forensic botany also deals with identifying plants, plant origin and its trafficking around the world. Generally, forensic botanists analyze the plant plants such as root, stem, leaves, flowers, pollen grains, seeds, etc. under the microscope or by using other suitable techniques. Forensic entomology. It is the study or the application of insects in relation to crime. Forensic entomology generally involves the life cycle of insect for investigating a crime. Typically, forensic entomologists try to establish the relationship between the dead body of a person and the maggots, in which he studies various types of insects and, and extract the information like 
time since death, geographical place, etc. etc. Forensic odontology, it deals with the dental evidences and sometimes called forensic dentistry. Forensic odontologists can draw the different type of application in various cases like identification of human remains in mass disaster, comparison of bite marks in many cases like assault, murder, poisoning, etc. In case of missing or unknown dead body, post-mortem or anti-mortem x-rays of teeth should be compared if it is available for the determination of age, gender. Nobody can forget the famous bite mark case of Theodore Bundy. This is known as a Bundy case. In this case, Lovell Levine, a forensic odontologist, testified the bite mark of the, on the victim's body. Forensic serology. It mainly deals with the biological fluid or body fluid. Basically, forensic serology is the study of antigen and antibody. We call it basically the study of the blood. Forensic serologists can individualize a person from the body fluid such as blood, semen, saliva, sweat and even urine. Forensic serology involves the individualization of people from biological fluid because these fluids are commonly encountered or obtained at the scene of crime involving a human body. Whenever this crime is against the animal or against a human body or property like that. Forensic physics. Forensic physics involves the application of physics to answer the question raised by the court of law. It mainly involves the study of physical characteristics of physical evidences like density, birefringence, refraction, determination and comparative study of optical properties, etc. etc. Moreover, it includes the physical matching of glass, paints, patterns of cloth, fragments of wood and cord. It also examines the physical matching of tool marks, footprint, footwear print, textile matching, etc. Now we move on to another important part or branch, forensic geology. It covers the study of minerals, oil, petroleum product or crude oil kind of thing and other materials obtained from the earth's crust. Typically forensic geologist analyzes rocks, stones, mineral in context of crime. Forensic pathology. First of all, let me clear one misconception among the people. That is, forensic science and forensic pathology is one and the same. This misperception persists till date. So my dear student, both are different. And please pay attention to this. It is the specialty of the medicine which deals with the investigation of the question death or if it is caused, it's not a natural death. Indeed, Forensic pathologist is well trained in forensic pathology, whether it is a clinical or anatomical pathology. He plays a significant role in the determination of a cause of death and the manner death happened. In those cases where death occur suspiciously or under unknown circumstances. They are also assigned the task to perform the autopsy or post-mortem examination of the dead body. Now we move on to another important part that is forensic toxicology. Forensic toxicology deals with the determination of drugs and poison in body fluid and tissues whether the drug or the poison is present or absent. It also involves the examination of effects of drug and poison on a particular person. Forensic toxicologists often work with the medical examiner or coroners. Moreover, he or she should have a basic knowledge about the other disciplines of human physiology, biochemistry and chemistry. Forensic toxicology received most of the cases related to drunk driving and the quantification of amount of alcohol in blood, urine, saliva etc. as well as in cases of substance of abuse, drugs of abuse, overdoses of drug and poisoning. So it's a person who deals with the chemical or the toxicological effect of some bad chemis chemics. Okay. Now we move on to forensic taphonomy. Taphonomy as applied in forensics deals with the history of body after death. So what happened to the body after the death? What happens to it? Its effect. Who is affecting it? The surrounding is affecting it. How long that body was lying in that particular surrounding? 
So these all are studied in forensic taphonomy. Now we move on to next interesting part, it's forensic statistics. It is the application of statistics to the legal system. Forensic engineering, it deals with the testing of materials, products, structures or essential components that do not work as they should do or fail in functioning. So they can damage the property or cause injury to a person. Forensic engineering also plays a major role in the investigation of a building collapse or suppose a collapse of a bridge. Forensic psychiatry. Forensic psychiatry explains the relationship between human behavior and legal proceedings. Forensic psychiatrists encounter civil as well as criminal judicial proceedings. As we have studied, these branches of forensic science give the forensic science a unique role in the field of criminal investigation. Here, we will take an example. Suppose that if investigating officer locates a blood at a crime scene, definitely he is going to send it to forensic science laboratory for analysis. After examining, forensic scientist gives an opinion based on the results such as, first of all, he has to decide whether it is blood or not. If it is not a blood, forget it. And this is performed by just simple preliminary examination of blood. If it is blood, then we will be moving on to confirmatory examination of blood. That is species examination from the blood and finally the individualization of the blood. Thus, it is the forensic serologist who performs all the examination on the blood received from the scene of crime. So forensic serology is the branch of forensic science that reveals the truth from the blood. Like forensic serology, there are other branches of forensic science that led the scientific basis of examination of physical evidence. I would like to give one more example in criminalistic. As we know about criminalistic, this word is not an English word, it's a German word which has been incorporated into English. The word was coined to tap the various aspects of applying scientific and technological evidence methods to the investigation and resolution of a legal matter. In addition to this, it involves the collection and analysis of physical evidence gathered by a criminal activity. Moreover, it includes areas such as fingerprint, footprint, tool marks and firearms, drugs, viscera, blood and body fluid, trace evidences etc. So finally, with this we come to the end and the essence of this topic is that each branch of forensic science is unique in itself and its uniqueness helps to solve a crime. The whole lecture was based on the branches of forensic science. In this lecture, we have discussed different branches of forensic science and how these branches helps in the criminal investigation. Indeed, investigating officers should also have knowledge of these branches for getting a good or a better result. With all these informative information, here we come to the end of today's lecture. Do keep in mind what we have discussed today as this is the basic lecture in forensic science. I will be back with one more interesting lecture in this series. If you want to learn more and enhance your knowledge, you may log on to our website at www.cec.nic.in for MCQs, quizzes and LOR. Till then, thank you.